Today on Bike People, we crank it up with riders from Adaptive Sports and Cycle Team. Forrest takes us on a special ride. Just like magic, I'll tell you what. And Suzette gets a little misty. All that and more, straight ahead on Bike People. Bike People is brought to you in part by the Des Moines Bicycle Collective promotes bicycling as a means of active transportation, wellness, and recreation in central Iowa. The Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation, working to protect and restore Iowa's land, water, and wildlife. Bike Iowa, your source for Iowa bicycle rides, events, and news, connecting cycling with Iowa community since 2001. My name is Forrest. I got my first bike at age three, my next bike at age seven. I've ridden in Europe, Australia, and all across our great nation. My name is Suzette. I'm a mom, TV personality, I have no excuse. and bike lover. I've known Forrest for years <laughs> from interviews, rides, and bike events. Things up for rag ride issue. I'm in the bicycle business and a cycling enthusiast. I've been collecting, fixing, and selling bikes my whole life. We love bikes and all the people, stories, and adventures around them. <laughs> We're on a journey to show you the world through two wheels. To help you become Bike, bike People. Welcome to Bike People. We are ready for another awesome episode. This week is about special riders with special needs and we talk to the founder of Adaptive Sports so, Iowa. We get to learn about their mission and we get to see a so hand cycle and all the unique parts. Lane. Plus, we get to meet some of the riders associated with those bikes. We also take you on a fourth grade bike ride and we get to meet a family with Hello, a buddy. great Hi. son and a very unique bicycle. Okay, what's the fourth grade bike ride? Well, let me show you. Fourth grade bike ride is just the culmination of an incredible year for these kids. I've been doing it for over 20 years. Uh, my daughter's 29 and, and I did it before she was in fourth grade. So we go through about an hour long presentation talking to these kids about uh, bicycles and about bicycle safety. To be uh, real careful, we use those helmets all the time and that's a big deal for us. And it's a great time to uh, get out there and do ride support and encourage the moms and the dads as well as the kids. It's like magic. <laughs> it's just like magic, I'll tell you what. In a school with four fourth grade classes, there are some children that have disabilities. They're not really easily able to ride a regular bicycle. And in this particular year, we had a wonderful young man named Matthew. And uh, we were able to work through a special style bicycle that would help he and his mom and dad and meet Matthew's needs. And it lets him become a normal fourth grader, having a wonderful experience. cyclists, so they understood the value of the bicycle and how much joy that they felt it could bring to Matthew's life. My joke with all the kids is that uh, there's about four or five that want to flunk fourth grade so they can come back and do it again every year because they have so much fun. It's wonderful to see kids get out and be active, get out and, and really enjoy uh, the trail system, enjoy the bicycle, and just get out and have a great time. Wow, Forrest, that was fantastic. I looked like so much fun. It was a nice day to be on the trail. The kids had a 
wonderful time out there and their parents enjoyed it too because they didn't have to work. We'll try to make arrangements so you can meet Matthew and his family. Oh, that's great. I can't wait to learn more. It's a beautiful day here at Gray's Lake and I am here chatting with the Adaptive Sports Iowa folks. They're doing a training ride for RAGBRAI. Let's see what they're up to. I'm here with Drew and he is riding with All Ability Bicycles for RAGBRAI. Great to see you. Yep, great to be here. Well, tell me a little bit about your bike. Um, I have a Lightning Lean Steer, so to steer I have to lean. Um, it's a little bit different than most hand cycles. That It's just set up a little bit different. Um, I don't know. This is, yeah, well, a hand cycle to me is like one of the most challenging things that anybody could ever do. It, it is a little bit harder than sitting upright, but it's not bad once you put in miles, just like a bicycle. First time out on a bicycle, you can't go that far, so it's just training and getting used to it. Yeah. So how far have you been going? Um, the farthest I've gone is 53 miles this year. In one day. In one that's, day. That's probably yep. more than I think I've gotten in and, this year. <laughs> and it was in six hours. So, six hours. You know. So what's Rag Bride look like for you? Um, I'm doing the last three days this year. Um, so it's going to be a whole bunch of short, fun days. Um, I think the longest we're doing is 63 miles on the very last day. Okay. So it should be really fun. Have you checked out the route to see like if there's lots of hills? Yeah. Um, the, the hilliest part's going to be the last day, I do believe. Okay. Other than that, it looked pretty flat. Now, it, I mean, is that like a huge challenge? I mean, what happens if you get going up the hill and, like, for me, I'm like, if I, I hop off the bike and walk it off, walk, walk with it, you know, and there's, that's not. There's no. You just keep going. Yep. There's just you keep going. Take stops. Wow, that's unbelievable. Um, I've only had to stop going up two hills, and you take a little break and then back at it. Now, how often do you ride? Um, I try to do at least two times a week, um, depending on the weather. Okay, so what will you not ride in? Um, I prefer not to ride in strong headwinds okay. and rain. Have you ever rode in like snowy weather? Yes. Um, before my accident, I used to ride to work every day and it was five miles. Okay. One way and then five miles home. How long ago was your accident? Uh, it'll be two years ago this November. Okay. How, how, I mean, I can't imagine how difficult it would be to like, you know, go from being mobile in a different way to, yeah. to you know, having some limitations. Um, it was a challenge, but life's garden, you gotta dig it. I gotta love that. It, gotta make it work for you. I love it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, I really appreciate no problem. You know, your candidness and willingness to, to yeah. speak to us. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of the way as much as possible. Okay, so I'm all right, check it out. I'm here with Nick, and we are talking about another hand cycle here. I love these. This is looks like one of the ones that we had on our show. Yes, yes. It's, uh, same make, same yep. model, same color. You so you know of the other bike. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have a lot of experience with them. Um, the bikes uh, with a lot of the bikes of uh, Adapt Sports Iowa. I mean, I spent a lot of time with uh, with Mike Boone, the director, mm -hmm. and he he showed and he's shown me a lot to do. And I work at a bike shop over in Jefferson, and I see a lots of makes and models come in and out of that shop every single day. Okay, all ability bicycles. All ability Jefferson. cycles in Jefferson. Okay. In Jefferson. Yes. How long have you been riding the hand cycle? I've been riding hand cycles since uh, late 2011. Okay. Um, I got my I got my first hand cycle in November of 2011. Um, and I train through most of the winter and most of the most of the summer, and then I did my first rag bri last year of 2012 with Adaptive Sports. With Iowa? Adaptive Sports Iowa. Right on. And then, and then after that, that was a that was a seven speed hand cycle that I got through a different that I got through a different shop. That hand cycle wasn't really a, um, a good hand cycle to 
use during rag ride because uh, it's just a seven speed. I don't have the gears to keep right. cranking up the hill. And oh my god! I, there was one. There was it. there was one point last year where I was riding my. I was I was going up a hill and I stalled out right here. <gasps> and, and what went, do you do? Well, there I have either have to roll backwards oh and gosh. get and get another push, or I have to have someone help me get my full yeah. rotation out. Okay. But with this with this hand cycle, since my arms aren't fully extended, okay, and see how they're bent. Yep. I can pull it more, I can, ha I don't have, I won't be able to stall out as easily and okay. I can be able to keep cranking up a hill. And that's why I've really- That's good information. This is why you're working at the bike shop. Well, so what kind of trails do you ride on there? Um, the main trail I ride on is the High Trestle Trail. Love it. In, in, in from Slater to, from yeah. Slater to Madrid. That's the one I ride from Slater to Woodward and back. Mm -hmm. I haven't done the full, I haven't done the full one from Anki to Woodward and back yet, but I'm playing to by before Rag Rai is And folks here. at home, that is a long ways. It's about 50 miles. That's there a long and back. Way. Yeah. There and back. Yeah. That's uh, a big deal. And, and that, that's and that's how about how that's not even 50 miles is not even one of the uh, it's it's a little it's a little bit more than a day of what Rag Rai is going to be mm -hmm. this year. So I'm pretty excited to to get at it this year. Tell me what Adaptive Sports Iowa has has done for you. Adaptive Sports Iowa has done so much for me. Um, I was in a wheelchair, you know. I wasn't. I wasn't helpless. I mean, I. I did a lot of things for. I do a lot of things for myself. I mean, I get dressed by myself in the morning. I transfer into my bed by myself. I transfer into the shower by myself. I do all that. And then in high school, I did state track, and um, and there I met a couple of people that that helped me go to the uh, UNI Adaptive Sports Camp, and cool. that's where I met Mike Boone, who introduced me to their basketball program down in Ankeny. And ever since then, I've just become full involved with Adaptive Sports Iowa. And I've become so much active. I feel healthier. I feel better Good. about myself. I, I feel 100% better mentally and physically. That is exactly what bicycling does for you. And, and exercise in general. So. Yes, yes. You have an awesome ride today. Thank you so Thank you. much for Thank talking. You very much. No Great problem. to meet you. Great to meet you too. Mm -hmm. Suzanne and I are here talking about her getting ready for a rag ride. I think we're gonna ride one of the same days. Yeah. So you you need to give me a big high five when you see me. Yeah. Right, right on. Love... So how how many days a week do you think that you um, go out on your bike? Two, three. And your dad goes out with you, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. We ride together usually. So you are um, practicing basically. You're yeah. training today for rag ride. Yeah. How far do you think you're going? My goal is. 20, 25 miles, and the farthest I've rode is 18, 19. Wow. So. How do you think this has changed um, your your life of being able to, you know, have a, a, the ability to use the bicycle? Because like every kid rides a bike, they so do. I get to ride a bike. I mean, yeah, you just get to yeah get to ride a cooler um, yellow one. Suzanne, thank you for talking with me today. You're kind of an inspiration. Yeah. 25 miles? I might not get that in today. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be 40. So. Ah, well, we won't let anybody yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah. All right, give me a high five, sister. Thanks. I'm here with Mike Boone, the director of Adaptive Sports Iowa. Thanks for coming in today. No problem. It's really exciting what you do. I know that you work with all kinds of different athletes with all kinds of different needs. You know, you're talking about um, basketball, there was a skiing trip. Uh, we love biking, of course, right. but you work with everybody. Yep, um, I'm the director of Adaptive Sports Iowa. Uh, our mission is we provide sports and recreation opportunities uh, for those Iowans with physical disabilities. Um, and we do a wide range of products or a wide, wide range of programs from cycling to um, team sports to um, you know, endurance, at, endurance sports, things along those lines. Um, we've been around for about two years um, and we've had uh, a very humbling success uh, in the process. It's, it's actually beyond anything we expected two years ago. I saw you guys on RAGBRAI and you've been on my radar ever since so I wanted to make sure that we could speak to you and find out exactly what it is that you do. Now you created Adaptive Sports Iowa. And yep. My wife and I originally wrote the business plan for Adaptive Sports Iowa because there was a, we saw a, a glaring need within the state for this. And you have to understand too, when we say Adaptive Sports, 
Um, our mission is to serve those with physical disabilities only. So that's the big separation between what we do and what Special Olympics does or what um, the Miracle League does. And, and by no means am I saying that their, their missions are wrong. Right. We just simply serve a different demographic. Um, and, and we created this because there's just, like I said, there, we, we want to create an opportunity that, that these athletes can participate with their peers um, in, a, in an environment that's um, inviting, but also competitive and also social. Um, and that's kind of where we've, we've, we've found our niche. You know, I, I've seen a lot of different bikes, a lot of different riders on Ragbray. Who are some of the people who are riding with you? Um, our team um, is roughly a roster of about 60 people. Um, and within that, it's about half and half volunteer um, and, athlete, and an athlete with disabilities. Um, and our athletes, we have about 10 different states represented on the team, and the disabilities range from spinal cord injuries to spina bifida, um, to amputees, to vision impairments. So basically you've got the paraplegics, you've got um, the um, blind and vision impaired, and you have the amputees. How does someone who's blind uh, ride a bike on Rag Ride? Um, what we're able to do is we actually work with them, um, and we find them pilots for a tandem. So they would be, they would be what, we, what was referred to as the stoker on a, t on a tandem bike. Um, in fact, we have one individual who's, who's um, we have a blind individual who's coming up from Florida um, and, and we're actually, he's riding on the back of a tandem and the pilot is from Maine. Wow. The first time they're ever going to meet each other is, in, is in, in, in Iowa. So we have, we have a, a lot of very unique situations on our team that are, that are, you know, we never even expected something like that to happen, but it's cool that we're really bringing these people together. How do you make those connections? That's amazing that you, I mean, you have people who say, from Florida, just yep. calling up and saying, I want to ride, I want to go on Ragbri, help me out. No, it's a, it's a fair question. Well, obviously, um, we, we're, we've kind of positioned ourselves. I mean, we are the team on Ragbri um, that, that serves this, de this, this demographic. Um, so obviously those athletes are contacting us all the time about being a part of the team, and which is great. Um, our biggest need obviously is, is volunteers, and the volunteers that we find, um, we mostly find through just building relationships. Uh, the individual that's going to be coming out to, um, to uh, pilot this individual's bike, um, we met him the first year we did Rag Bride because we, stayed, we, we were staying overnight in the same YMCA that he was staying at, and we just struck up a conversation. He contacted me the next the next fall saying I want to be a part of your team and we were able to make it work out. So well, you realize you're going to have a lot of volunteers after this. That's show that's my hope. <laughs> that's my the, honestly we we, yeah. we need volunteers in everything we do. Um, I'm you know I, it, unfortunately right now we're, we're only two years old. Um, we don't have the resources to really have a lot of a lot of presence in terms of employees. So we cannot function unless we have volunteers. But let's talk about what it's like. Um, how do you get people to the beginning of the race? Um, where do you camp? You know, give me the whole. What's, what would it feel like for someone who joins the team? Um, sure. By the way, you just called Rag Bray a race. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry, TJ. Do you know TJ, the director? I do know TJ. Sometimes I feel like I'm racing, though. I know. I just want to. It's, it's, a, it's a fair point. There are a few people that I want to beat. But you yeah. know, that's, that's almost sacrilege. What you just said. <laughs> it's a ride. It's a ride. Um, and that's. But one of. The, I mean. The reason we were, we're, we're, we're part of Rag Bright, obviously it's such a big part of Iowa culture. Um, it makes an obvious sense for us to be a part of that event. Um, to get people to the beginning of, of the ride, um, we coordinate accessible transportation from Des Moines to the start point and then from the end back to Des Moines again. Um, we've got a fantastic support crew, so we actually um, will take everyone, everyone who uses a wheelchair, we'll take all of their um, all their equipment, all their wheelchairs and walkers and everything they need to the midway point and we'll have them all lined up on the main route so when they pull in all they have to do is transfer out. Um, we have a number of volunteers that are actually riding with our team so if we have some riders that, that want someone to ride with them we can, we can pair those people up. A lot of our riders are very independent. They, they, they want the support from the team but they don't need someone like out there. So do you have any stories that you want to share? I'm sure that there's so many things that happen. That... Yep, absolutely. Well. Um, for example, the first year we did the ride, um, we, were, we were pulling out of the first down. That's when we were going, um, leaving from Glenwood. And, and we were all kind of nervous um, because we've never done anything like this before. We didn't know how this was going to work out. But it was cool to see the progression that first year. So when we're pulling out of Glenwood, um, you know, everyone's kind of, as, as they pass our team, everyone's clapping and saying, you know, good job. I'm glad you guys are out there. But it was cool as the progression of the week um, went on to see how people's interaction with our team changed. Because when, we when we were leaving Glenwood, we were just, we were the disabled team. You know, we were the team of hand cycles, we were the team of blind riders, and that's probably how people viewed us, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's just a societal thing. But as the week went on, people kept seeing us, and by the end of the week, we had just ridden 500 yeah. miles like every other cyclist. We were just anybody else out of Right, and by the end of the week, 
we, I, I felt like the, the rag bright culture was almost looking at us as just right. cyclists. Um, and one thing that I've always found very interesting about it um, is obviously when you're using a hand cycle, you're, you're pedaling in this motion. I can't even imagine. I you know? can't even and your imagine upper that. body muscles are extremely smaller than your lower body muscles. So it actually, it's a lot harder, obviously, to use a hand cycle. So at the end of the week, you, you make that realization that a lot of these cyclists have just done 500 miles physically pushing their bike across the state of Iowa. And that's, and that's where you get in the debate of, oh man, do I usually, really use the term disability to, you know, to define this team? Because it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's difficult to do that. And in fact, that first year we even came up with a phrase that we stopped, we stopped referring to our team as the disabled team and we just referred to everyone on, on RAGBRAI as either a shoe user or a wheelchair user. <laughs> because really, really, I mean, I, I would, I, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of riders on RAGBRAI that I would consider able-bodied that would have no chance in, in pushing a hand cycle across oh, the state goodness. of Iowa. There's no, no way. way. So by, by a lot of accounts, these, these guys are actually more fit than a lot of the people you find on RAGBRAI. Hey, thanks for meeting with us today. I really love what you're doing. Your work in the world is so valuable and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Forrest promised that I would get to meet Matthew's folks and get to see his bike and that all happened. His mom, his grandma were there. I got to meet Matthew, checked out the bike and it was a great day. Well, I'll tell you, Matthew's parents really appreciate that style of bike because it allows them to go out, enjoy nature, enjoy the trails, just be a family out having fun. They really appreciate all the options that exist out there. Well, let's take a look. Where's the coolest place you've taken the bike so far? At the park. At the park. Yeah. Do you ride a lot? Yes. Hey, Matthew, I want to thank you for taking time out to show me your new bike. It's pretty awesome. Give me a high five, man. Woo! How has things changed for you getting outside with the family since you've, you have the new bike? As a family, then everyone can be on a bike mm -hmm. and he can do to his activity level. As a parent, you just want them to have that chance yeah. to be able to ride a bike and the independence that it gives him. Right. Uh, changing his own gears, braking. Though we I did, we did end it. up, we did override the brakes. Okay. Uh, because we were having a tendency, he, he would always them, say, it. hit the brakes, <laughs> and uh, that we would yeah. do, and I felt it. <laughs> so um, we wanted that opportunity for him to bike, and it connects to our bike. This bike can be adapted in so many ways, from foot pedals to the gears. Have you ever thought about doing a little bit of rag ray? It's coming through Des Moines. My husband would love it. I saw that smile coming. I knew it was going to be yes somewhere. Yes, and that's we would love to start participating in the local rides. It's an awesome family opportunity. It is to get everybody together. Is he asked to go out? Yes. Ride. Yes. Every night we would go out really? last spring, and we bike seven days a week. So. Really? Mm -hmm. it was Did you ever wonderful. think to yourself, "What have I got myself into now? I have to go biking every single day." Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I can, we are so lucky to have so many wonderful trails yeah. oh. so close oh to home. Gosh. How has Matthew changed since he's been on the bike? He loves to go. He has to go. He is so excited to get on his bike. And it's something that gives him independence um, and the joy to go out and be outside. He loves to see all the wildlife. It's amazing what we see on the trails. So it's so beneficial in many ways, mentally and physically. Well, Forrest has been telling me about this bike, so this is the first day I've actually been able to see it. And then the fourth grade ride. Tell me about the ride. The ride was awesome. As a family, we were able to prepare so that Matthew could join his peers and go on a bike ride. I'm going to start crying. Do. That's great to <laughs> you. <No. laughs> all right. And I might too, so that's fine. But it started back in the having the dream of going on the fourth grade bike ride yeah. and how we were going to accomplish that. So I made a call to Forrest and they said that we could work something yeah. out and they have been absolutely wonderful to work with. For the opportunity to Matthew to go through the tunnel and have his classmates cheer him on was just a wonderful experience. So we're looking forward to the fourth grade bike ride this year with some of his classmates so we can have them join us as well. Hello, buddy. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, and he has Eric's bike gloves on. 
It's wonderful to see kids get out and be active, get out and, and really enjoy uh, the trail system, enjoy the bicycle, and just get out and have a great time. Told you. You're awesome. awesome. Yes, I did too. Oh, that's, that's such an unbelievable story. I, I miss stuff every time that I see it. And the whole episode today was fantastic. We met with Mike Boone from Adaptive Sports Iowa and met the riders that he's riding with on Ragbri. Well, Bike People wishes Matthew and his family many, many miles of fun, safe, and enjoyable cycling out there. In fact, I've got under reliable authority that they've been on the trail practicing and getting in shape for Ragbri this Ooh. year. Do you think he likes rhubarb pie? Well, I'm sure he does. The bag on the back was like a four rhubarb pie size bag. And that is how we measure things around here. That's right. <laughs> well, make sure you tune in next week because we're going to visit a bunch of attractions around the High Trestle Trail, uh, learn about Survival Iowa, and we bike to Snooze Hill Vineyard. That's where you get to do the stomp ride. I know you had a lot of fun doing that. Well, check us out on Facebook and also check us out on our website. And get on out there. And become bike people. Um, if you see us on Rag Ride, though, I'll stop, you have to stop yeah. and say hello. Actually, um, I was, I've was i been watching bike people and I was like, I, we gotta, I gotta see them on Rag Ride. Yes. <laughs> well now, yeah, now you're a celebrity. Yeah, you're a celebrity. that's why I told my old lady. I was like, if, we, <laughs> if I get to go on camera, I want to become a celebrity. You could. Yeah. Turn it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Have an awesome ride today. It was great to meet you. Yeah. Great to meet you. Bike People is brought to you in part by The Des Moines Bicycle Collective promotes bicycling as a means of active transportation, wellness, and recreation in central Iowa. The Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation Working to protect and restore Iowa's land, water, and wildlife. Bike Iowa, your source for Iowa bicycle rides, events, and news, connecting cycling with Iowa communities since 2001. Thanks for watching Bike People. For more about us, like our Facebook page and check out our website at www.bikepeople.tv. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bike People TV, all one word for behind the scenes looks.